Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship here at St. John, whether if it's your first time or you've been here many times, you are welcome and we are glad to see you. So exciting day, isn't it? Today, we first of all welcome Bishop Joy. She, she's going to stand. There she is here to join us. Um, she will offer us the, a message um, and her presence. So, <laughs> And as well, Pastor Don, who we will install. <laughs> and it's so good to see all of you. Following the worship service today, we will have, we're going to have cake. Yes, we don't do that every week. But today's special. So we have some cake and we have fruit and all kinds of wonderful things. Thank you to Carolyn and Gaylord for setting up coffee. That'll happen back in our narthex following the service. Um, Pastor Don and Bishop Joy will be there. And then after some time of of fellowshipping, we will, um, as leaders, council members, uh, we'll have a a few minutes with Bishop Joy too. Um, so, So it's a great morning for us. A few other announcements. Um, Number one, the bishop is here, but Lent is coming. Now that's the next thing we're planning for. Wednesday, Wednesday, February 22nd is Ash Wednesday. For those of you who may not know, or a reminder for those who may have forgotten, we do two services here at St. John, all the Wednesdays in Lent. Um, The Ash Wednesday service will happen at 1230 up here in the sanctuary, and again at 7 o'clock here in the sanctuary. Soup, pie, bread is available before those services, and in fact, I think the sign-ups are still out for soup, so if you haven't and you want to provide your wonderful soup, sign your name up, or pie, or even some bread. All of those sign-ups are out there. Following Ash Wednesday, that midday service stays downstairs in the fellowship hall. We just eat and then have worship together downstairs. But Ash Wednesday, we come up here. Um, So those are great opportunities to be with one another, and I hope to see you all. Finally, for those who may not know already, um, the service for Jay Peterson will be next Saturday. So that's Saturday the 18th at Sacred Heart at the Catholic Church. Um, Again, I want to express to you, having had conversation with his family this week, um, how much this place and all of you meant to him. He would brag about us as much as he bragged about his family to us. We were his family as well. So at 11 o'clock at Sacred Heart, the service will happen. And I had a conversation with Father Pat Um, And I will be a part of that service as well. Um, So a wonderful way for us to partner in supporting the Peterson family. So I hope that you can make it next week. Because of our opening now for a custodian, we have a job description. What we're asking people to do, and the job description is on the welcome wall, says salt and light. It's on the salt and light wall right now. Um, To the left job description, we ask that a resume and an and a, and a introductory letter come to us here at the church. I've actually fielded a few phone calls. I had a phone call from someone who said they'd take the position, but we will do some interviews. Um, so we have a deadline of, I'm looking right at Vicki, March 15th. Is that what we decided? March 15th. Um, so, so if you know of someone, um, you can send them our way. We have that job description. Um, it is 20, 25 to 30 hours a week. So we really want someone who's able to be available for that. Now, are there other announcements for the good of this assembly? Are there prayer requests? I certainly encourage you to keep in your prayers first. Um, All of those uh, staggering numbers of families, of people affected by the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria... So much loss. Um, So first, we pray for that situation that's ongoing and still dangerous. As well, um, if you would like to help, I actually put on the table that has white a white covering on it that has some um, 
some devotion booklets for the for the Lent, um, for our Lent observance. As well, there's a sheet of paper that that tells you how you can give um, to the Lutheran Disaster Relief Fund. Alternately, if you want to write a check out today to St. John and put in the memo section earthquake relief, um, we'll make sure that those funds get where they need to go as well. So, other prayer requests? Seeing no other prayer requests, I invite you to rise in your body, in your spirit, for our call to worship. We are gathered in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit to know and proclaim Jesus Christ and as disciples reach out in love. Let us worship the Lord. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us now confess our sin. Holy One, source of our renewal, we confess that we are wrapped up in sin and cannot free ourselves. We have not practiced your righteousness. Our hearts have turned away from you. For the sake of the world you so love, forgive us that we may be reconciled to one another for the glory of your holy name. Amen. Thus says our God, the former things have come to pass and new things I now declare. God's mercy makes us new. We are forgiven in the name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Well, my goodness, we're such a great gathering. We can sing together the gathering hymn, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty with Strength and Power. We'll do verses 1, 2, and 5. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
O God, the strength of all who hope in you, because we are weak mortals, we accomplish nothing good without you. Help us to see and understand the things we ought to do, and give us grace and power to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We have special music. Thank you very much, choir. That was beautiful. I know someone who loves John Rutter, and I think we did John Rutter proud. It's now time for our morning readings. The first reading is from Deuteronomy 30, uh, verses 15 to 20. 
The Lord sets the Lord sets before the people of God a clear choice. Life and prosperity will come to the faithful. The, choosing life entails loving and holding fast to the Lord. Life in God's presence presupposes the promise made to the, his, the ancestors. A reading from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Moses said to the people, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandment of the Lord, your God, that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that your descendants may live long, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, the word of the Lord. Let us read responsibly of Psalm 119. Happy are they whose way is blameless, who follow the teaching of the Lord. who never do any wrong, but always walk in your ways. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. I will thank you with a true heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. Save me. The word of the Lord. The gospel. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus according to Matthew. Glory to you, Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a sister or brother, you'll be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, You will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering a gift to the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, 
and the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard what it was said. You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone that looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in, her, in his heart. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go to hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the grounds of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman against a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, For it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The gospel of the Lord. You You may be seated. Pastor Beth, I did not check this gospel before I said it would come here. (laughs) Good morning. It is good to be with you. Thank you for the invitation to be here. And what an extra delight when I spoke with Pastor Beth about being able to be here. I don't know that any of us were expecting that today would also be an installation. So thank you so much for for allowing me the honor of also installing uh, Pastor Don this morning. I bring you greetings on behalf of the congregations of our South Central Synod of Wisconsin. My name is Bishop Joy Mortensen Wiebe. I've been serving as the bishop of our South Central Synod for about two and a half years. Our South Central Synod uh, makes up 135 congregations across 13 counties. Um, So those 13 counties um, spread from... You're kind of up here towards the top, but we go all the way down um, with one congregation in Illinois, down towards um, Beloit, that area, and then we go um, spreading all the way, well, crisscrossing for you, but we're over in Dodge County as well, Beaver Dam, Mayville, um, cover the Madison area, of course, that's what many people think our synod is, but our synod is in fact 60% rural and small town, Um, so it is a delight to be out and about and with you. Uh, this morning uh, to, to be here and to get to know you better. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, as we hear your word, we sometimes wonder how and what to make of it. But Lord, we trust your word is active and true and that your, act, that your word stirs us into action. Lord, be in this place, stir our hearts and minds, and set us out to serve our community. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we Lutherans, we have a rather tenuous relationship with the law, the commandments. We cling pretty tightly to Christ and his cross. You know, we talk a lot about being baptized into his death and resurrection, right? Probably all the pastors you've ever heard come through this place and other congregations you've gone to have talked a lot about death and resurrection. And we have no use for the law, right? It doesn't have any hold or claim on us. Moses is dead. Christ is risen, right? When I say Christ is risen, you're probably ready to say... See, we're well-trained. 
We know about the law. We know that Christ has the final word, that we are forgiven, that we're whole, that we're free from sin, death, and the devil because Christ has been crucified and is risen. We're whole because Christ has made it holy and has made us holy. And it's not even that the law like plays second fiddle to the gospel. The law like didn't even make it into the band kind of thing. So that's why we squirm when we hear these texts read for us and proclaimed from the pulpit. When we hear Jesus talking like this, it doesn't really fit with what we hear and believe and are taught. So my husband's also a pastor. So in full disclosure, when we have these really hard texts, I will often come home and go, so what are you doing this week? (laughs) And this week was a particularly busy week for me. Uh, We had a lot of synod events. So it was more like, what are you doing this week? So he said, now some of you will appreciate this more. It took me a while to get to this place. But he said very excitedly, Don, I think, will appreciate this. He said, well, you know, do you remember that 1984 documentary Spinal Tap? See, I knew he'd get it. Some of you get it. He said, I was thinking about that. So I'm coming to it. He said, in that, there's this guitarist, Nigel Tufnell. Like, I had to write this all down and, like, pretty much take it from what he's going to preach. So you're getting a little bit of Lakeview Lutheran sermon right now. So there's two sermons, Lakeview Lutheran and Madison, and you are getting this section the same. So he said, in that 1984 documentary, guitarist Nigel Tufnell demonstrates a really special amplifier whose volume knobs don't just go 1 to 10. Right? So like, you know, when you turn up something, it goes 1 to 10. That one goes 1 to 11. Because when you need an extra push on something, you turn it to 11. Okay? You with me? All right? You go way up to 11. So in this text today, Jesus is cranking it up to 11. All right? Jesus really wants us to get it. He really wants us to understand. You've heard it said, you shall not kill. It's too easy, right? We'll all go, "Eh, well, I've never killed anything. But let's talk about the grudges that you hold. The anger that you hold on to. Whoever it is that you're ticked off at this morning. If you keep gnawing on that anger and letting you eat it up, could be something as simple as someone calling you a fool or cutting you off at a light. Maybe on your way to church this morning. Er, 11. Jesus goes on to say, you shall not commit adultery. Most of you would go, easy enough. But you'd better not, this was in the text, right? You'd better not even take a second look at that person who just caught your eye. Because that's a sin too. You know what? You got to pluck your eyes out. Right? You heard that in the text and some of you went, I saw you. (laughs) Er, 11. And it goes on, right? That text went on and on. Make your yes a yes and your no a no. But it's really not that simple, is it? Jesus keeps turning the law up to 11. Whatever are we going to do with this text today? Where can we go from here? There's been a whole lot of sermons, and I'm sure I've been a pastor a long time. There's been a whole lot of sermons preached on this passage, focusing on, well, Jesus didn't really mean it that way. I mean, I'm sure I've preached them. So as I was trying to prepare for this sermon... I also read a really interesting story, and I want to share it with you. So there's a guy named William Willimon, who was a campus pastor at Duke University in the 70s. 
And he tells a story about uh, the dean of students was having problems with a frat house. That's a surprise, right? This frat house was causing all kinds of, the, you know, the usual problems. Too many loud parties, all kinds of, you know, the other things that happen. So rather than putting that fraternity on double secret probation, he decided I should just send the dean of, of the chapel over to them to give him a little lecture. Because, you know, the dean of the chapel, every chaplain, every pastor, would, that's their dream, dream thing to be sent to do. So William made an appointment and goes over to meet with the fraternity folks. And he's sitting in a circle with them, and the president of the fraternity's there, and, you know, all the key leaders of the fraternity are there. He's talking to, talking to them one night, and he's, you know, he's giving it to them, like, all the reasons you, you can't be having these loud parties, you can't be having all this underage drinking, you can't be, you know, wheeling all these barrels in, all that stuff. He's talking about, you know, there are laws you got to follow. You know, didn't you come here to study? I mean, you can imagine. What would us poor preachers ever say to a bunch of frat boys who aren't listening, right? And in the 70s, they didn't have their phones, but they would have their phones out. They'd be looking bored, probably falling off their chairs. So he's going on and on, and he's, you know, preaching at them. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't, can't, and they're glazed over and falling asleep. So in the middle of all of that, in walks a little boy. This little boy is about nine years old, and he walks in, and Willimon is... He's on a roll, you know, as us pastors get. He's on a roll. This little boy walks in, and he's thinking to himself, oh, geez, it's really bad. The little boy goes up to the president of the fraternity, whispers something. The president whispers back to him. He nods at another guy in the circle. That guy stands up, takes the little kid by the hand, leads him upstairs. And now, I mean, the preacher's caught off guard, right? I mean, that would happen to me if... Something weird happened right now. He tries to get back in his tie ride. Pretty soon the kid comes back downstairs. He's in jammies. The president takes the kid to a far corner of the room, puts the kid on his lap, and starts reading him a story. So now William, Willimon, is tripping all over himself and like is just trying to think, how do I get out of here and go back to the cozy on-campus office I got? And so he wraps up, and he's like, you guys, just behave yourself. I don't want to have to come back here anymore. The president finishes his little book, nods to another one of the guys, who takes the child by the hand and leads him back upstairs. The president uh, stands up, thanks the preacher for visiting them, and then heads out on the porch of the fraternity house. Why is it that every fraternity house has a porch? Goes out on the porch. And William Willimon is out there too, and he says, what is all that, what is that about? What is a kid doing in a frat house? That's a very good question. That's Eugene. He and his dad live just down the street. It's just the two of them, and dad's a drinker. And sometimes he's in no shape to take care of the kid. So we set up a spare room for him. He's got extra clothes and all the stuff he needs, and we feed him. And we help get him on the bus in the morning until his dad sobers up. Then he thanked the college pastor and he promised that they'd behave better. And Willimon told him, you know what, never mind. And he walks home. When Jesus turns the law up to 11, where can we go from that? Friends, we're called to go to the vulnerable, to the edges of our society, to the person who's at the end of their rope. Each twist and turn that Jesus makes in this gospel, he's pointing you and me to other people, to those who are alone, to those who are in need, to those who have been cast out. While Jesus loves you in particular, right? And hopefully you hear that every time you come to worship, every time you come to this place, every time you go to church, you hear that you are loved by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. While Jesus loves you in particular, 
It's never just you and Jesus. We live and die to our neighbors. Our faith is never individualistic. The law and the commandments are about how to have a God and how to have neighbors. It's not a solitary affair. Self, the community, the congregation, the synod, the ELCA, the world, we're all connected. We are church together. Each step Christ has us make is about more than ourselves. Bigger and bigger than we could be ever left to our own devices. Jesus turns it up to 11 and there's nowhere for us to go but to go outside into the world. Today you're taking another bold step, right? And calling a second pastor into this journey with you. And in doing that, you're increasing your capacity. Not just so you have more pastors to do the work of the congregation. That's part of it. But that you have more pastors to walk alongside of you so that you can all go out farther into the world, so that you can all use your gifts and see how God is calling you out farther and farther to meet the needs of your neighbor. That's why you expand your staff, so you can go farther and farther out into the world to explore where God's calling you. So I celebrate with you today that God's cranked you up to 11 and that God's brought you another person to walk alongside and challenge you. And I pray that your journey into this community and out into the world will be blessed. Amen. I would invite the congregation to rise. 
having been authorized by the church to install Pastor Don Glanzer, our co-worker in the gospel, as pastor, I now ask for certification of this call. After prayerful deliberation, we of St. John Lutheran Church have called Pastor Donald Glanzer to be our part-time pastor. I present him in a letter of call certifying this call. Thank you. Got to turn to the right page here. I'm flipping in the wrong order. You know what? You can sit. You don't have to stand through all these readings. It's only me. <laughs> yeah. He's only the part-time pastor. If you're with a full-time pastor, it'd make you stand. <laughs> a reading from John. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. A reading from Matthew. Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. A reading from 1 Timothy. Set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Attend to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things. For doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Pastor Don, in the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God through the call of the church? I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church? Will you carry out this ministry in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and in your use of the means of grace? Will you love, serve, and pray for God's people Nourish them with the word and sacraments, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living. I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Will you give faithful witness in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. Almighty God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength and compassion to perform them. Amen. Now you get to stand. People of God gathered here today, will you receive Pastor Don Glanzer as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard him as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of God? Will you pray for him, help and honor him for his work's sake, and all things strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? We will, and we ask God to help us. Pastor Don, the office of pastor is now committed to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, By the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Follow me. Always. (laughs) That's a first. You have been called to be among this congregation to baptize, 
to teach and to forgive sins. You've been called to be with this group of people, this congregation, to proclaim the good news. And you've been called to be with these people to (laughs) proclaim, I lost my place. (laughs) You've been called to be among these people to preside at the Lord's table. People of St. John's, I would invite you as I present Pastor Don Glanzer, your pastor, to welcome him in the name of Christ. And now, in good fashion, we put him to work right away. (laughs) And as your newly installed part time pastor, who has great care for the congregation, you may be seated as we say this long (laughs) confession of faith. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus the Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Call your people to seek your wisdom in difficult conversations and actions. Give the church everywhere courage to repent for the ways we have tolerated and practiced injustice from systemic racism, the church sanction of colonialism and church protection of sexual abusers. Merciful God, inspire our wonder at creation from the light of dawn to the beauty of the dark night. Sustain the unseen depths of the ocean to the plants and animals we know well. Bring healing to lands and communities experiencing national disasters, especially the people of Turkey and Syria. Merciful God, instruct the powerful in your ways, provide upright leadership in business and industry, that workers are not oppressed. Throughout the world, inspire voters and raise up politicians to heed your call for nations to practice righteousness. Merciful God, loosen the bonds of injustice in our midst, grant peace to endless quarrels, Put an end to hunger and break every yoke of oppression. Shelter all who flee abuse in their homes of violence in their communities. Satisfy those afflicted in any way. Merciful God. Shape our congregation to be salt for the earth. Give us delight in your commandments that we are generous with those in need. 
Make us steadfast in our trust in you, ready with tangible mercy and compassion for our neighbors. Merciful God. In keeping with God's commandment to pray for others, we pray for those who celebrate their birthday this month. Greg, Jean, Melissa, Arnita, Matt, Mike, and the mission and ministry of Sugar Creek Lutheran in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Merciful God. The cross and resurrection bring redemption from sin and death. We praise you for the martyrs of the Japan and all those whose unshaken faith in Christ shines forth in their witness. Keep them in our remembrance and bring us with them into the kingdom of heaven. Merciful God. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be and abide with each and every one of you. you. Now, before we do the, uh, um, there's an offertory thing that we do. Uh, I know as I look out here, there's quite a number of, shall I say, experienced people. (laughs) People who might remember the 60s with fondness, perhaps. So do you you remember what this is? Yeah, what is this? The the Vulcan sign of peace, right? Or or live long and prosper? Well, everything is contextual. Everything always is contextual. And in today's first reading from Deuteronomy, Moses tells the people, see, the Lord has set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. And what does Fox say when he does this? Live long and prosper. Life and prosperity, right? Now, do you know what this is actually, other than just the Vulcan sign of peace and prosperity. And also, in the the Jewish tradition, and remember, we are from Jewish roots. It could, you know, if you're from Wisconsin, I suppose you could say it looks like a W, kind of, although my my hand is kind of weird. Um, But it also stands for the next, the penultimate letter of the Hebrew, Hebrew alphabet, which is the letter Shin, and it, it's, it's pronounced just like, it, like, I, like it's called. It's shin. It's the first word in shalom. It is the first, word in, the first letter in Shaddai, which means El Shaddai, for the Lord. And shalom, which means peace. So live long and prosper. Life and prosperity. It's all contextual. This stuff is easy when you think about it. So please, share a sign of the peace as you feel comfortable.
Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God given for all of you who are the people of God. All is now ready. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please come. But before that, please sit. Now, we're going to do... Communion a little bit different in this context today. We're going to have both sides going at the same time, so there'll be there'll be bread and wine stations on both sides. So you'll come down the center aisle and receive the elements, and then go back by the outside aisle. So do please come.
of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. Now may the body and blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, nourish, sustain, and keep all of you unto eternal life. Amen. And please stand as you are able. 
Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you all today and for all time. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of Life. Go in peace, follow the way of Jesus.